365, good afternoon, shake my hand. Guys, we've got 24 hours before NFP drops tomorrow. 24 hours before NFP drops tomorrow. And there are a lot of things that I want to talk to you guys about, right? So I'm going to do a full NFP breakdown, not what it is. We should all know what it is by now. If you don't know what it is, it's a non-farm non payroll. Uh, it's a data set that comes out every first Friday of the month. It basically looks at the month before to see how many jobs, NFP for United States, right? So how many jobs were created in the United States. Today, the date is the 1st of July. So we're looking at NFP data, figuring out how many jobs were created during the month of June. Right now, this thing had like a lot of a uh, uh, volatility back in the day. I mean, it used to really shake the markets. Like if you wanted to make uh, a big sum of money, right? Risking, uh, you know, some type of money in the markets as everything else, you you will most likely, you're most likely to see, you know, a lot of that type of movement inside NFP, right? But over the years, it's my humble opinion that, you know, NFP data has not been the most strongest thing. And maybe let's just start with looking at the dollar today. Uh, I, 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 that its impact, right? Its impact doesn't resonate as much uh, as it used to back, back then. Uh, but essentially, tomorrow's NFP is quite important. And that's what I want this video to be about. I'm going to explain to you why I think key market movers are going to be looking at NFP data tomorrow. I'm going to tell you uh, what I think is already out there in terms of how a lot of people think markets are going to play out. I'm going to show you the statistics. I'm going to show you where to go. And then I'm going to also then map out a few trade ideas in the charts, or at least stuff to look out for. If you like this video, like the video. Please, please, please comment, share, and subscribe. More importantly, in the comment section, if you want me to upload the second video to this, which will be me looking at specific pairs that I want to trade tomorrow, then you're going to have to comment, you know, as soon as possible down below. So I know that that's of interest to you. Right. But let's, let's just get started, guys. Let's just get started. Um, and then and then we see where we go with this video. So I'm hoping to keep this quite short. Now, when there was not much that happened this week, I mean, I, I, I've done a video uh, I recently just trying to track um, um, and it's somewhere there on the channel. Our channel is still very, very new or like three days in, but do check out the, the recent videos that I uploaded where I'm looking to buy Euro pound, right? And, and I was actually tracking uh, some inflationary data yesterday in the Euro, uh, it remained unchanged. And so because of that, not much happened, right? Uh, there was a short sell opportunity, but markets have really gone back up. So it depends if you're a scalper, but I'm going to wait for that big buy that I spoke about in that video there. So please do check that video out, right? But in terms of where we are right now, okay, so, so I was looking at, you know, price, uh, 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 price, fundamentals, sentiment, you know, it's essentially trying to make sure that, that I'm, I'm actually covered here. And, and I think the best place to start, and I can see you guys can see the... The, the 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 heat map right so so if, if you had seen this in the morning right dollar was dominant today like during the london session when i was trading the london session it was just green 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 against the dollar maybe not here but this hasn't really changed much right zero point zero one percent is not something uh significant but dollar was completely green it was like a dollar market this morning and and since the new york session has opened we're about an hour into the new york session you know market starting to cool down a bit uh, um, um, some places not that significant, like AUD, USD. We're going to talk about that in this video today, uh, uh, and you know, and, and then so some cooling down on NCT CAD. And if you go through the charts, you will see, you know, at market opening. Um, um, if I can quickly just share my screen there, right? You will see that at market opening, this thing didn't really do uh, too much. It, it did cool down a bit, right? So about two p.m. summertime here we are. Market open somewhere there. Uh, and price already started to drop a bit, but now it's, it's, it's kind of like pausing for recovery, right? But we'll talk about this properly. But I, I just want to look at some, 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 some big macro themes first, and then we'll start to link those macro themes to micro movements that will happen tomorrow while dialing down, you know, you know, sentiment, uh, some fundamental analysis, and, and, and obviously some actual price structure, right? So, so where are the supplies and demands? Um, and, and then also just kind of like walk you through well, what I do believe will be the most important thing around this NFP tomorrow, right? So let's talk UK first and just kind of like get the pound out of the way. So, so when I want to know personally uh, um, how, how the economy is doing for the pound, I like to look at the index, right? The FTSE 100, the UK 100, that is a good indicator of, 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 of how that particular economy is doing. Now, if you look at this economy, and I I'd already marked up this chart during the London session today, so if it's okay with you, I'm just going to go through that. 
uh, uh, versus me just redoing this analysis. But if you look at this thing, beginning of time, we finally reconnected with a, a trend line from 1988, right? Which is kind of like held price in 1991, held price in 2003, held price in 2009, and obviously during the, the, the COVID market V-shaped recovery for, for all risk sensitive assets, uh, you know, in March uh, 2020, right? And this is where price is right now. And, and generally speaking, we are not always excited if you're if you're bullish on a on an index or a risk on asset and price arises at such a specific area we are worried about the supply levels in there because we assume that there is most likely more hidden supply most likely just generic supply right that exceeds uh, available demand right so so we'll be looking you know uh, to that if you look back uh, on the uk 100 you'll see they had a down week and, and, and they've kind of like just been ranging in the same place and, and and this would be the an interesting level, right? If price was to, to kind of like react to the supply up there, this might be the first place it will come back to, right? Retesting our 17th May lows, at least here. And then if this breaks, and then, then we're going down to the downside, right? So as, as I'm talking, I'm sure you're wondering what kind of a trade I am. I'm a supply and demand trader, right? So I'll never make a, a trading decision based on support and resistance, only fundamentally. I don't believe that's enough information for me, right? I'm looking for institutional levels, order blocks, order flows, all that kind of good stuff. But this is where the UK uh, uh, you know, economy is right now, right? Or oh, literally still struggling. So if you look at NASDAQ, Dow Jones, SP500, if you look at the United States indexes, right? All those indexes have actually recovered. China 50 as well, right? All those major indexes have fully recovered from the COVID drop in 2020, right? So it's somewhere here, February 2020, where this is a corona shock, right? You see prices still trying to make its way. The, the, the general trajectory, right, should be something like this, right? The general trajectory over time should be something like this, like every other major index. The difference is um, uh, uh, this has been a very slow base recovery, you know, for FTSE 100 for, for, for various reasons, which I'm sure we'll get to discuss a lot in the channel, right? Uh, the first video we've uploaded, I think for me is the most important because if you can understand my vision for this channel, uh, uh, you'll be able to kind of like ride with me even better, right? So I, I lay out the six, seven playlists I'm going to have. Uh, I will be uploading a video pretty much almost every single day. Uh, uh, so, so, so it's nice to kind of like just start with us from the beginning and grow with us, right? So just hit that subscribe button uh, and click on all so you can catch a notification, right? So now let's spin our screen. And the reason why I wanna do that is I wanna pull up the actual currency, right? I wanna pull up the pound USD chart, right? So because I think that would be interesting to see. So I've got pound USD right there in front of me. Right, and then I'm just gonna go to a very similar time frame, and then I'm just gonna use a different broker because they had so many notes in this one. Right, so this is, this is the chart I was using earlier on today, right? And you can see this is where pound USD is. Uh, uh, you can see this is where pound USD is. I'm just trying to get some more real estate on my on my screen there, right? There we go, some space. Right, so this is where pound USD is, right? And this is where FTSE 100 is. Let's go back to the Monday time frame here for the FTSE 100, right? So we've got a situation like this where the FTSE 100 right here is slowly trying to recover from everything that it lost, right, during COVID. And then we've got pound USD as well, significantly arriving in a specific area of value where, you know, there's a high chance, right? That, that, that they might be going through a downward cycle, right? Or, or, or only time will tell, but, but price is really shaping up, in my opinion, inside of a very good supply. Uh, um, it's, it's an exhausted supply, you know, so to speak, but, 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 but this is a possibility that price could go down here. Number one, this is also a possibility that price could break up to the upside and then go down again. Uh, you know, it, one of these two scenarios will play out. Uh, the Saturday, if you're around the Saturday on the 3rd of July, I'm hosting my first Traders War Room on YouTube ever, where we'll be doing signals. So we'll be literally unpacking all these charts. If you're really, you know, keen for that type of approach, uh, please come through. Uh, generally speaking, I used to do these things every Saturday on our Facebook page, and now we're moving everything to YouTube. So the Saturday will be the first Traders War Room. I uh, look out for that. Right? But 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 look, man, there's some similar similar things at play. If price does go down a little bit there, and then on the on the right side, maybe we can expect you know a, a little bit push up. We shall see. Right. But the biggest thing, uh, and I just wanted to get this UK stuff out of the way because I've been also kind of like 
eye and an opportunity and, and they might be a very good one tomorrow you know with, with nfp right just depends how this thing is going to play but 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 you 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 you, you i think we should kind of like situate this whole thing in a context right so nfp guys uh, um, uh, is obviously focused on jobs data, right? Literally focused on jobs data. And, and generally speaking, it comes out, like I said, in fact, not generally all the time. It comes out on the first, literally on the first Friday of every month. But a lot of retail traders don't know this. There's a private company called um, um, ADP, if I'm not mistaken, ADP, yeah, I'm correct, ADP. And generally speaking, ADP tries to underpin Right, a market sentiment by releasing uh, um, some some market forecasts, right, some speculations on what they think the official NFP data will be on Friday. So, so basically, forty eight hours before NFP drops, ADP generally just kind of like tells us what they think is going to happen. And really, the, 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 what they're doing here is they just pretty much mapping out the number of jobs they think have actually been created in the economy. And it has got this impact, right, on the market, right? It kind of like can preempt the market. Uh, um, 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 if, if, if their release is bullish, right, the markets, you, you start to see a market rallying based on that, a pre-rally into the real rally, um, et cetera, et cetera. But everyone is human beings, so people can get stuff wrong too. So just remember that stuff. But yes, let's start there. ADP, National Employment Data in the United States, released um, um, um it's take on F NFP tomorrow, all right? And then I just want to kind of share those results with you, first of all, and, and then we kind of like discuss what, what where, where we think it's going. Now, now, NDP, just to be very clear, is a private firm that does rough estimates, right, on how many jobs will be added to the economy. So the NFP results were seen tomorrow on the 2nd of July, one more time, just to really explain this, is, is the results of how many jobs have been added to the US economy in June, right, in, in the month before, in June, which is actually quite important because if we can understand this, we can look at one big financial quarter of the year. Let's say well, we're ending the second financial quarter. So we can look at NFP results of May, April, June, and just to see, right, speculation versus actual, right, and see if there's a, a particular trend we can pick up, a particular growth path that we can pick up, and a trajectory that we can pick up. So that's kind of like my approach to NFP. I never wait for the news on my phone or on my computer on the day and then start opening trades, right? Because market execution, a poor trading psychology, market formal, massive spikes, over risking, all those things come with that, you know, you know, massive, you know, emotional moment uh, with traders. So I like to kind of like do a lot of work in the background, make sure I'm prepared and start to, to kind of like find, you know, the best places to sit in price. The same approach I do with all my FOMC meetings, right? So, 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 and, and maybe in the next video, we can talk about that a bit more, right? So, so, so right now, like I've said, NFP pretty much does this. Now, like I said in, in, in the beginning, it hasn't had the most impact over the years, it's kind of like lost its volatility power. Like people are like, yeah, because there's so many other economic factors to consider, COVID and this and that and that. In fact, last year during 2020, it didn't matter. NFP did not matter. We expected the results to be poor. Markets kept pricing in that. So when markets price in something, right, the day that something eventually happens, there's less of a shift, right? Because we knew of global lockdowns, we knew uh, of massive death rates, we knew of, of delayed rollouts in vaccines. Before then, there wasn't even a single vaccine. And so there was a massive anticipation of poor jobless claims reports week after week after week, let alone the big ones month after month after month, right? So, so, so over time, it's kind of like lost its impact. But... This report for tomorrow, I think, is going to be quite important because of its ability to become a strong indicator, right? So we can't we can't forget that on the 16th of June, which is about two weeks ago, right? Uh, FOMC did did a massive statement, uh, uh, created a lot of volatility in the market, pointed to uh, you know you know the possibility of not only interest hikes but them happening faster than expected, right? Why? Because they're trying to combat and deal and manage inflation. So inflation right now is the governing theme in the markets, right? So if you don't understand what that is, hopefully we can talk about this a whole lot more next week on the YouTube channel. But inflation, just so you know, every single big 
country, uh, a big economy is very much concerned about inflation, especially countries that were using a lot of stimulus packages, right? Giving a lot of people money, you, you, you must understand how the inflation uh, you know, cycle starts. So NFP tomorrow, my, my understanding and opinion of this whole thing is it will be affecting markets perception on the interest rates, job recoveries, economic recovery, and the direction, all right? So that's why I think uh, uh, while there will be a lot of volatility, I'm not expecting like a gigantic amount of volatility, but I am expecting, you know, finalization of trends, right? Is the dollar really going to go through a big, big recovery, right? Or, or was that dollar bull run also about to come to an end, right? All these kind of big, clear questions are going to be answered tomorrow, right? So let's get to the heart of it. Let's, let's look at ADP first. So this is the ADP website. I have it here. I have it tabbed out for you. I just want to make sure, um, even when I teach my students, you have no idea how many students remind me to share the screen. So I get a little bit paranoid there, right? So, so when I was reading this, I was intrigued, man. I mean, there are a lot of stuff, guys. I just simply need to download the full report. But I, I have to tell you right now, the devil is in the details. You would not believe that even if this is not the amount of jobs they believe will be uh, have been created in the month of June. When you read the actual full uh, press release report, there's a place in there where they actually double back on themselves and, and, and they remove about 90,000 jobs from, from this number, but leave this number out there, right? So the devil is always in the details. Um, it helps a lot to actually understand, you know, what's going on here. But we we're going to play with this number that's trending right now, right? Was in, if it's not trending, it will trend or, or the number that's out there, right? So they believe, look, man, there's going to be 692 thousand jobs added right that have already been added back into the economy um, um, um essentially that's the argument here and it's a simple cool report it's got beautiful infographics it'll tell you like you know which sectors you know how they came up with you know that particular figure right you can see that you know there's just one sector currently down and i don't think it's bleeding that much four thousand jobs is a big big deal but i'm saying in terms of you know comparative analysis, right? It's, it, this is actually pretty good. This is very, very optimistic. Now, I'm in South Africa, right? I, I don't know which part of the world you're watching uh, my videos, uh, but I want you to know that you have to put into context that countries like the United States uh, or places within the United States that have been serious about vaccinating these citizens should be doing stuff like this, should be opening doors. We should start to see vitality and life into those economies because people can go out. If people can go out, people can work. If people can work, people can earn. If people can earn, people can spend. And this is behind a federal government also pumping the economy with a whole lot of money, right? So this, this speculation from at least uh, you know, uh, at a first impression makes a lot of sense. Yes, people should be uh, going back into construction, right? Everything should be kind of like slowly coming back into place, serious recovery, right? If you were to ever join my World in three years program, the very first big, finally big, because there's a lot of clarity now in, in the email uh, and also money has changed hands, right? So, so stocks uh, have done their full alternation, money is going back into tech, temporarily, you know, we shall see how that ends after tomorrow. And I'll explain the effects of that today in this video. Uh, you know, cryptocurrency is still where it is, right? We, we, you know, the, all, all these things, how, how big banks, institutions, rich people circulate the money is what we should be really paying attention to. And it's what we pride ourselves, you know, in the academy. We actually understand the institutional flow of money, right? Because, because that's what's moving the money, right? So anyways, in this report, I found this ph phenomenally interesting, right? That, that look, man, uh, this is what they believe has been added into the economy. Uh, and if you go to tab four, I, I have tab four here, which is investing.com, right? So now we get the, 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 the actual forecast, right? The official forecast. And this is where they are. They are about at 11,000. Uh, some sources, you know, this ads on about coin shares, coin base, coin this, coin that, right? So, so, so some actual sources do, do talk about 700K. So a slightly more than ATP report, like they believe that there'll be 700,000 new jobs that were added in June. I've seen other sources speak about 711, right? So literally 711, uh, you know, thousand jobs, et cetera. But so, 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 so they're, not, they're not too far apart, right? Look at this, they're not too, about 8,000 jobs, you know, making up the difference between the two. But you can see that both websites, you know, both, 
uh, market analysts and in the cluster of who they represent as market analysts have this perception that at least, at the very least, 692,000 jobs were added into the economy last, uh, you know, last month. And if you go one step further, some actually believe it's even more than that. It's about 700,000 jobs that have been added there. And, and, and the reality is tomorrow we'll actually get the figure. So at some point in time, half past two South African time, on my schedule, right? I'll be, I'll be, I'll be looking at these markets live, pre pre preparing to add or to move or to change my current plan, right? Based on the results here. All right. So now, I, now that I've, I feel like I've done a very good introduction of, of what this is, what how this operates, the good places to go to really, really bookmark the site, uh, so that next month. Uh, uh, you know, when the next NFP comes through, you, you kind of like already have a pre look that they will release their data 48 hours, 24 hours, sometimes 72 hours just before NFP. Um, and generally speaking, you know, they are a seasoned uh, research company around employment data that generally is close or on the mark, right? Just depends on all factors considered and what you are looking for in the market, right? You always want to trade what you see, right? So for me, uh, personally, and I'm talking as an outsider, as an African, right? This report sounds too good to be true, right? It sounds very awesome, but like I said, you want to pay attention to the final actual figure, number one. But I want to do a couple of scenarios with you, if that's okay. I want to do a couple of scenarios with you. And, and before we do these scenarios, I want us to kind of like go back in time, you know, go back in time and, and maybe assess what actually happened, right? Uh, 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 historically, and, and, and I say for me, I, I'd like to use about three months. So, so in front of us here, if I can just quickly explain this thing here, this is the historical release data and tomorrow they're gonna to be filling in the missing gap. So I'd like to start maybe from the April report, right? The April report would be would be this one. So, so, so how trade, uh, you know, how these news reports work is you will get the results on the first Friday of the month, but those results are referring to the previous Friday. So for example, 2 July is tomorrow, Friday, we're going to get the results of last month, June. But on the 4th of Ju June, uh, you know, last month, Friday, we were getting results of May jobs, right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So if we start from the April report, right, the forecast was interested in April. The forecast was, look, man, we, <laughs> we, we think there's going to be 978,000 jobs added to the economy, right? You, you can imagine in, in April, we, I think, most people were very still much drunk under the Biden euphoria, uh, and, and, and under the Biden conception of a better president than Trump, uh, the stimulus package, Democrats winning a lot of stuff, etc. There's just a lot of stuff going on after that first financial quarter, right? The first presidential financial quarter, the first presidential 100 days, all those things were, were massive factors. And, and people believed, or, or at least analysts thought, look, about 978,000 thousand jobs were added that month and and you can see how far from grace they fell right markets literally literally took a crazy bit in here uh, a lot of stocks bled out if you just go through your your april may charts you'll see this for yourself there's a lot of bleeding on the street a lot of companies did not do well uh, it was just terrible forecasting really and, and it's not that if, if you think about it the forecast for tomorrow is 700,000 jobs. And the focus for April was so off, right? Completely off by 712,000 jobs, right? So this here, they were wrong about, about by a big, 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 big number, right? And then we look at the May report. Now the report for May said, look, we've sobered up a little bit. We are forecasting about 650,000 jobs, right? And then the next day when NFP popped up, it was actually 559. So you can see why both these numbers would be marked in red, that both of them really uh, kind of like Mr. Mark, right? So, 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 the, so again, it was a big miss, uh, uh, um, uh, um, but, Here's my thing, guys, about this kind of stuff, right? When you're doing market analysis, market sentiment, market trading, make sure you have all the data. So that's one way to look at what I've just said. The other way to look at it is there is some type of progression, right? Don't lose sight of the trade. They are creating jobs, right? This is significant. 
Yes, it significantly changed, right, et cetera. But remember, COVID has changed the very fiber of our economy, right? So it's not just that people are looking for jobs. You have to answer the question, what kind of jobs are people looking for? All these small factors can start to delay. So I might not want to go back to my restaurant job. I might want to upskill myself, right, and first go to school and take a one-year diploma so that when I go back to the labor market, I'm going for something else. How many people are doing that, right? I might start getting lost into my world, the world of online trade or, or online education rather so so i mean online educator in financial markets right where you're teaching people different stuff people are grading their skills right it's a it's a classic thing that happens in capitalism the first person who wrote thoroughly about it was a guy called uh the braver man or, or something like that. he's talking about upskilling you people have to upskill themselves right in the economy so so yes they are constantly missing the mark but I am starting to pick up that there is also a trend that needs to be almost like acknowledged, right, that they are adding jobs, but the jobs that are being added, they are moving at a much more slower pace, slower than expected, right, and it could be because of a various amount of reasons. Now, let's talk about tomorrow. Like I said here, we've got 700k uh, a job. Let's go to Forex Factory. Where's Forex Factory? This is Forex Factory. It's another place where you can just get your kind of, So Forex Factory is also looking at about 700K jobs, et cetera, that they, the, the, they think, you know, would be added, or at least it's what a lot, a lot of financial analysts in the markets are, are actually alluding to. Right. So my take. Now, I'm leaning towards a bearish side. And maybe let me just pull out my whiteboard for this. Uh, um, um, and, and it's, not, it's not a very side to, to, to a point where I think, you know, it's going to be terrible for the market, but it, it's a specific type of very side. Sorry, I just want to reshare this screen, make sure you guys can see my whiteboard. Uh, move this here, apologies. And, and it's just so that I make sure I put the right screen in front of me and, 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 and then my notes are not all over the place, blah, blah, blah. Right, so here's my whiteboard here in front of you, you should see my whiteboard. Now, I, I'm a slightly, I'm slightly bearish and, I, and, I, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. So it doesn't mean I think they're not gonna create jobs or they're gonna miss the mark, you know, 10 times, but I am slightly bearish and I'm leaning towards a bearish side and it doesn't have to be the case, right? So I'm not saying that's what's gonna happen tomorrow. The, how I feel about bearish or bullish in terms of job creation is, is a non-factor from the main thing I want you to take from this video. What I want you to take from this video is how to read the data and how to move from there, right? Because things are gonna happen quite fast tomorrow and you don't have to if you don't want. Remember, I'm not your financial advisor. All of this that I'm doing is really for educational purposes it's, and, and just to share my experience. So I'm telling you what I would do, how I would approach it, because I'm accountable to myself and my wins and losses, right? So, so it's really just that, right? So now, I, again, just a little, just, just, just a tint of, of, of bearishness here. And it's because I'm looking at what's important, right? So what's important is to actually wait for that tab to, to, to change up. That's what's important in the markets is to really see that particular place, you know, switch up from, from being specifically uh, a, a, a 700K or above 700K or below, and then making a final decision for your trading, all right? So, so that's the one thing I'd really ask everyone to kind of like, first of all, consider, wait for the data, wait for the data, the data, the data, the data first tomorrow, right? But Here's my outlook right now, 24 hours before, before before NFP, right? If we get a positive NFP, for those of you who don't even know, maybe you don't understand how to read this thing or how to use it, I'll quickly tell you. A positive NFP has a very specific, you know, outlook and a reaction to the market. So positive NFP, and it probably makes sense psychologically if I make that green, right? A positive NFP is, yes, they got their 700K jobs or, or more, Right, we thought we were gonna get 700K. Actually, we created 750 or 800. That's positive, right? That's positive. Positive is the forecast uh, is met or, 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 or beaten, right? So they are completely co move way far ahead than what they thought they were gonna get. Now, if we get a positive uh, NFP, this is good for the economy, good for the economy, which means if it's good for the economy, it's going to be good for the dollar, right? So the DXY will rally. If it's DXY is rallying, a lot of USD pairs are going to be overpowered. They're going to be strong. There's going to be a renewed bull run or specifically since 16 June, not necessarily renewed, but a continued bull run. So that's something to watch out for, a continued bull run if NFP is bullish. But but 
uh, 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 what I want to do with my channel now is to really start to open a lot of retail traders' minds to a lot of things that they don't consider, you know, when they're inside this silly uh, uh, signal service group. So let's talk, let's talk fundamentals, you know, and how it's all linked together. Let's say we get positive NFP, but not just positive NFP. Let's say we get ridiculous, heart-burning, uh, uh, Red Bull, Bull Run NFP. So so, so they not only get the 700,000 uh, jobs created, but they get more. They get like 800, like it really, really, really rallies. So, so let's say we get 800K tomorrow, 850. Let's go with 850. Something absolutely shocking and ridiculous. And, and I'm, I'm starting with this scenario because it's important to understand this, right? This has got a many, many, many impacts on different types of asset classes, right? So your dollar pairs, right? Your dollar pairs, DXY, your USD, your currencies, all those things, good, 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 good. They're going to rally. It's going to be a strong, strong uh, signal for dollar. But your the other impact that's going to happen here, which is a lot of stuff that I don't see being spoken about you know, in the retail market, whether it's a lack of understanding or people just don't care or don't even know these things, this is a different story. But the thing that we need to consider first is the impact this is going to have on what is known as the 10 year yield. Because the 10 year yield will explode, right? We saw the similar you know, movement during the FOMC, right? If, if there's a lot of good news for the economy, the 10 year yield will do well. So we'll, we will potentially see another rotation in price, right? And this rotation is money being pulled out of tech. Right, so if you see positive NFP, let's break it down even simpler. Right, I'm just, just want you to understand this. Right, if you see positive NFP, good NFP, you're going to get a strong dollar number one, strong 10 year yield number two, but then you're also going to start to see a negative on risky assets. Right, you're going to get risky assets. Oh, the whole thing changes. Sorry, man, risky assets. So you might start to see massive sell offs in tech. Right. So what I mean by that is Nasdaq will start to sell off. Right. Because remember, all big investors want to do is to put their money in the most competitive place where they're going to make more money. And if that's putting money in, in, in bonds and yields or, 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 or in tech, et cetera, that decision will be made in an instant. And one of these assets is going to start to hurt. Right. But as the 10 year yield is going up. Right right because of influx of money into it okay and and, and essentially the, the the risky assets the tech stocks are going down uh, uh please remember or just note at the back of your minds in the long run this is a good indicator this is a great indicator for economic recovery this is what's important right now, right? A lot, a massive, massive indicator for economic recovery where we will actually start to see, you know, demand, but not just demand in terms of where you trade, but actually demand on the ground. So start to see demand growing and sustaining. You want sustainable demand, you know, for, 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 for an actual economy, right? So this is the, the upside of things. If we're positive or if we are super, super Red Bull positive, we'll get such similar very strong movements up there the dollar will be strong taking yields will be strong but your risky assets might start to come crashing down just a little bit as markets restabilize themselves you, you know these news releases have a short term uh, uh, massive shake but they can also create long-term trends from that right so be careful of that now but if we miss the negative scenario if we miss and we get a negative uh, NFP, and the negative NFP is less than 100,000, uh, I'm, 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 you know, sorry, what am I saying? And the negative, negative NFP will be less than 700,000 jobs, so 700K jobs that they are, are forecasting will be created. So if they start to drop here, and I wanna be very clear, I wanna drop a range, right? Because remember, we've got market, you know, serious speculators, and, and what was that number from the ADF, which I promise you, serious, massive trading companies look up to, right? They really look at this data and they make significant decisions based on it, ADP. So the ADP uh, are currently at hand, I'm just looking for my whiteboard, I think you guys can still see it, right? The NFP at hand say it's 692, right? Thousand jobs have been created. And then everyone else is sitting at about 700,000 jobs to be created. So when I say negative, I'm, I'm saying, you know, if we get something on the other side of the spectrum, literally like that, if we get a negative like this, 
you know, in the charts where prices not only not going to meet the 700K, but also fell short of the 692K, then things are not going to be great for the dollar. Right, things are not going to be great for the dollar. Uh, um, 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 there's, there's going to have to be a slowdown of any type of growth as the price drops, right? So that's just the way you'd want to kind of like play play any any type of miss, right? And you've seen though in the last two to three uh, NFP releases that they actually were wrong. Financial analysts were wrong on this website. They were absolutely, absolutely, absolutely wrong on the website when they were projecting, uh, you know, the two projects that went through in April and May, right? So it's it is a possibility that they could be wrong again in June, right? So bear that in mind. But there is a serious down, 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 down sell, right? There is a serious uh, 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 being level of being wrong that will create a specific capitalization in the markets. And this is if price ranges between. So if you get NFP data, and not only do they not create 700,000 jobs, but they created jobs within this range, between 300,000 and 500K jobs, right? An inverse will happen to, to, towards the positive. Dollar will be weak, dollar pairs will fall, right? And the, you know, it, you, you just have to realign yourself with the charts there. You know, most, most likely see some, some push up. Tech will do well, right? Tech will do well because the 10 year uh, yields are going down, right? So, so that's, that's the two. That's kind of like how you kind of like can draw these two parallel lines on NFP. Positive, this is what I'm looking for. Negative, this is what I'm looking for. It works better if you've got charts set out for the positive and you're looking for specific areas of value before it comes out so that you realize it during that volatility moment that where price is going. And you do the same for a scenario where it's negative and markets go down to the downside, right? But if they are short, if they go even deeper, if something goes fundamentally wrong and markets come back below 300K, from 700 to below 300K uh, inside the market space, just brace yourself for a serious problem, all right, in, in, in the marketplace. Because less than 300K, the 200s, the whatever, whatever, we're going to be now starting to look at some super depressing news in the market space, right? We're going to start talking about stagflation. We're going to start talking about big problems for every sector, right? There is no, there's no real winner there uh, in, in that particular place. So this is well worth, you know, looking into. All right. But if, if like I said, um, 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 you're happy with this video, the way I've broken stuff down, please do like and share and subscribe. More importantly, if you'd like then for me to upload my second video, because this is what I'm looking for to trade tomorrow. Pound USD, uh, uh, you know, on one of my brokers, I will be looking to take a trade on the DXY. I'll be looking to take a trade on USD, Swiss franc. I'll be looking to take a trade on USD, JPY. Looking to take a trade uh, in USD CAD and of course AUD USD, which I think we can talk about today, and Euro a, a USD, right? Euro USD. This is the main, you know, you know, dollar pairs that I've got my eye on, you know, that have already started showing us rapid movement from ADP's reports, rapid movements from FOMC report. Um, um, so, so, so I'm, I'm trying to align myself with charts that will do the move, right? Which will be committed to moving and trending um, um, than, 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 than anything else. If you want to see this analysis, let me know down there in the comment. But guys, before I go, can we just take a quick look at some charts, man? Imagine doing a trading video without having a look at charts. I'm going to keep it quick. I'm going to keep it simple. And what I want to talk to you guys about now is, is just really for you to see for yourselves how markets are shaping up, right? There's, there's a weird thing that happens just before a massive news update. Right? And I find it fascinating that structure will play ball, right? Structure will slowly start to align itself in a very specific way. And that's what I want to talk about. So if there's time, uh, and, and I'm sure there is, they, they, we were not rush here. We want to do this thing properly. I just want this video to be so long or too long for you. But if you're still watching, I appreciate you. It helps a lot the channel. It helps that you stick through the videos towards the end. It helps that you interact, uh, you know, with me down there in the comment section. So I, I thoroughly appreciate that, and, and and I'll always be motivated to do more content for you guys. Right, so DXY is a chat that I want us to look at. AUD USD is a chat that I want us to look at. Um, um, 
Let's see, let's see. I uh, already kind of like glanced at, you know, the, the UK economy. Let's look at gold, right? Because dollar and gold have an inverse relationship. So why would we, let's quickly look at gold spot there uh, so, so we can kind of like see what's going on. And then maybe if I don't feel, you know, we've done covered enough, then we can look at USD JPY, which already is kind of like in the mood, right? So let's just talk about these four charts and start to mirror down everything that I've just said. So mirror across rather everything that I've just said, right? Around uh, uh, NFP uh, uh, potential stakes or, you know, on the table and how, you know, markets are pricing in the moves for tomorrow. So let's see if I can, if I can move this out of the way and then go back to my, to my, to my uh, 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 charts there. Bam, 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 bam. Right. So there we go. Share the screen for you guys. Apologize. I'd rather do it this old school way than, than miss out on a shared screen to be too late. This video is to get out tonight. There won't be time to do any edits. Right. So, so, so here we are here on pound USD. Like this is what we we're looking at earlier on. And I did say we're going to start with the dollar. Right. That's what I said we will start with. So let's start with the dollar. Let us start with the dollar and then we can come back you know, to, to other, other, other currencies, right? So let's look at DXY. Now, I won't lie, uh, there's a specific area of value on the DXY where price left, you know, violently, which was the, actually the FOMC meeting on the, on the 16th of June. I have been yearning for price to come back there. And when I say come back there, I am literally referring to down here. Why? Because there's a specific areas of value that you already know in general, that have a lot of potential. Right? This area of value there had a lot of potential, had a lot of potential. So I want to make sure I'm on the right DXY chart because a lot of my notes have disappeared, but that's fine. That's not a problem. We can redo them, right? So, so, so my my thinking due throughout last week and this week, right, was that price would need to return back to this massive imbalance it created. But this massive imbalance is the 16th of June, right? That's when the FOMC came out. And in there, guys, they, they, let's go to the one hour time frame, right? I, I really, 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 really want a price to come back down here. Right? And when price comes back down here, it will be retest in the zone. Like that, right? So price will be retest in this zone there. You can see that was 8 p.m. FOMC and then this massive explosion. And what price did then was to kind of like build like a fort or like a boundary, right? To ensure that price actually has a lot to do with going up than coming down. So, so over the weeks, you know, I've been, you know, two weeks really since FOMC, I've been hoping to see some downward side up until I gave up because price was just making higher highs, you know, along the way, et cetera, et cetera. But this is a good chart to start off with the dollar index, DXY. Now in this chart, right, I, I do believe, you know, that, that markets have been playing, you know, mind games, they were they're slightly quiet. So if you go to the daily time frame on this chart, you will notice that after the FOMC, markets really didn't do much. After, from here to there, yeah, am I correct? Yeah, I am, absolutely. So after the FOMC, so this is the FOMC, uh, markets just kind of like, you know, just been ranging a bit, uh, pushed up and then barely came down, took a PCP level on a FIB, uh, 0 0.38, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so it came to the almost the 50% area there. Markets really just kind of like have been, have just been waiting, right? And, and, and there's some potential that they would rally up all the way to this, you know, daily supply, right? But there's still a lot of stuff going on, on the left side. But there is that potential there. There's potential that this market gap could help, right? You know, it uh, just depends on how your broker is printing your orders. Watch out for that. But for the most part, markets have done absolutely nothing, but essentially retrace a bit and then come back up, right? So there was a buy opportunity. We retraced, it needs to come back up, which is perfectly fine. Now, when looking at things like NASDAQ and Dow Jones and the dollar, right? Because remember, you're thinking about that US economy. You kind of like have to always keep in mind some type of inverse relationship, right? Inverse relationship between the two, right? Between risk sensitive assets like NASDAQ and the Dow, to use an example, this is a safe haven asset like the dollar, number one. But even between the two, NASDAQ and Dow Jones, they seem to be recently at divergence 
right? A divergence of, 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 of the two, right? And it's actually interesting. It goes back to that thing around the 10-year yields that I was telling you guys about, but how to explain bond yields, like long-term US bond yields, right? In the wake of the FOMC, right, on the 16th of June, right, they got uh, 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 not that much of a change. I'm talking about nominal bond yields. They were pretty much unchanged, if not, you know, longer, but, 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 but they're currently lower now. This is the last time I checked a couple of hours ago, nominal bond yields, uh, you know, and they tend to be extremely bullish, right, when it comes to tech stocks, very bullish when it comes to tech stocks. But in general, uh, tech stocks, uh, 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 growth stocks, etc. you will note that the first big wealth uh, a wealthy in three years club email as well will be tackling this issue. So if, 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 if there's an advantage to operationalize on in the stock market, that's what the, that's the email you're going to get. So please look out for that. It's due to come this this weekend for those of you who are part of the wealthy in three years program. But, 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 but a lot of this thing moves in a very specific way. So while Dow Jones, Dow Jones is the top US 30 industrial and banking companies, right? So when you when you close down Dow Jones, when you slow down Dow Jones, when you tank Dow Jones, when Dow Jones does the market recovery, it's really benefiting, uh, you know, a couple of industrial economies, right, industrial economies, and also uh, uh, naturally the banking system, right, which are all directly influenced by bond yields. So where growth expectations come from, uh, or, or when growth expectations come down, at least for a while, this is going to hurt the sector. Right. If, if that's the result, and and that's what we're, we're being told, then the expect and the expectations come down. It's going to hurt this sector more specifically because of how the Dow Jones, you know, is kind of like murder, uh, you know, made up. And we call this relationship between classic assets like Nasdaq, tech stocks, and Dow Jones a divergence relationship, right? A polar divergence, you know, relationship. So, so that's one thing to look at here. On, on, on the dollar time frame, right? So price is running up, price kind of like is staggering there. We can see it's going up. If it breaks this area of value, there was no telling at the time. But if it does break the area of value, there was absolutely no, I guess, I guess, a point really. Like if it breaks up here, I, 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 I would assume there's going to be a push to the upside. Right? There'll be no point to kind of like make a, 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 a sell to the downside, right? but it's all based on the data. Don't forget about that data, right? So, 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 so I've spoken to you guys about this nominal bond hills. Uh, I, I watch out for that uh, because the expectations are based on the results. And once the results are out, money just starts to flow. All right. So this is the dollar index. If it's okay with you, I just want to quickly drop to one time frame lower. I'm going to go to the H4 time frame just to show you what's happening. Obviously, right now we're looking at live market conditions. Uh, the date is the 1st of July. So it's the Thursday, 24 hours below. And you can see prices kind of like broken out of this structure, right? So whatever, we've got a break in market structure. If you use basic, good, good technical analysis strategies, you should be able to know that after a break in market structure, wait for the pullback, don't just buy you know, don't treat everything as a fake out. You'll be faked out. No breakout strategies, right? So you want to see this pullback come down into this area of value there. Right? Uh, um, I, and that's even not, I don't, I actually, I'm not happy with it. Let me put it that way. Maybe if I was to take an intraday trade, sure. But I'm not actually happy with this area of value. It doesn't really meet all my needs. But on the intraday time frame, in, in, you know, uh, institutional or, or rather intraday traders, you might have an opportunity here, right? It's essentially done with the full 61.8% retracement. It hovered and made a base on the 50% that retail support area. I like the golden ratio area. In any case, it's arrived at both and then it's just taken off, right? Literally going up. So now it's a matter of two things. Between now and tomorrow, we'll price do this and come down there. Oh, we'll price, you know, do this, come back down. Oh, maybe go back up, then come back down. You'll see for yourselves, right? Tomorrow, uh, I just based on, 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 on the data. But if you wanted to be in this trade, you should have been in it a couple of minutes to an hour ago where markets are pushing to the upside again. Uh, ideally, it would be nice if you have a better entry lower, all right? Buy low, sell high. Now, as this is going up, 
you know, on the hour, right? The, the one thing that is an interesting inverse relationship with the dollar is obviously our good friend gold. And I wanted to actually talk to you guys about gold. So I'm so glad, you know, that we can do that real quick on the chat. Let me go to a daily time frame so you can actually see what I see. All right. And, and I find this chart so interesting because I missed a massive swing by, uh, you know, the first time market started to recover. But I'm hoping that gold is actually slowly making its way to 1.5. If it is, I'm adding back to my EFTs. I'm buying more stocks around it and I'm actually going to buy more gold, actual gold around it. But I also want to add, right, add, add a beautiful swing positional trade you know, on 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 the on 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 on, on different type of leverage based platforms, right? So that would be a very good low for me to buy gold. This is gold on the daily. You can see it's coming from a long term downward channel, right? Literally a, a channel that was started last year on the seventh of August, all right? And this is the FOMC on the sixteenth of June. So you can see what I mean by inverse relationship. So on the sixteenth of June on DXY, we've got a strong clearly identified green candle on the 16th of June. Uh, you've got a very much strong, clearly identified, um, I, I mean, no, bearish type of situation, the drop of the FOMC. And now this is where price is here, trying to fake out or look more like a bearish flag. All right, some type of consolidation and then a drop. 365 traders, wherever I taught you how to trade, don't forget this, right? Uh, when our glass effect is done, uh, um, please move accordingly, right? So, so here for me, Glass effect looks like it's completely done. So there's no pressure right on my end. There's absolutely no pressure. But I can see that prices is, 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 is seemingly anticipating more downside, right? So I'm, I'm quite bearish on gold, to be honest with you. But again, any of this could completely change tomorrow if the NFP data uh, you know, comes out more positive. But if it comes out okay if it comes out you know within that range that i gave you so so not that great but not that poor uh it's within that healthier range then 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 you know market will stagnate and then move a little bit into one direction but if nfp is extremely positive and the dollar is extremely strong are uh, strong and 10-year yields are going up then gold will drop All right so the next destination for a gold drop Right, so obviously the scenario exists where gold can come back up, but the next destination for a gold drop will be somewhere down here. That's the very first and, and truly, you know, the next destination for gold, if it was to keep falling, right? It will be somewhere there, somewhere down here. You can see there on the left side, you've got a double bottom, right? You're looking at the, the you know, March of May, right? Uh, the month of May, sorry, um, you know, and, and, and that's a possibility. I will not be buying here. Now, if I've taught you how to trade, once again, class effects is an important theory for me for price. I will watch them get there. I'm pretty sure the banks will try and buy up, push price up into somewhere here. Somewhere here is already a big harbor of supply. And when price gets here, eventually I'm going to sell all the way down here. So let me just draw a couple of arrows to explain that. I'm saying markets could do this. One, and then somewhere up here, two, and then go back somewhere up there, three, right? So it's like, a, sorry, the, the last part is extremely unnecessary. It's like a, you know, a, a potential good swing sell trade if, you, if, you, if you're comfortable, you know, going through such such moments in time in life, right? And price is actually back inside our downward channel. So that, excuse me, also helps kind of like my analysis and our argument, uh, you know, around this, this entire thing, right? So, so, so gold, you know, or rather if NFPs, you know, are, are positive, then yeah, we're going to get a strong dollar and then gold will sink and come back to retest. I think this, is, this will be its first target, right? This double bottom here, but then it could go far, far, far much more lower, right? Remember, gold hates it when the markets are hawkish, right? So hawkish, go walk up, dovish to dive down, dovish, hawkish, to, uh, you know, hawkish, optimistic, hawkish, great, hawkish, let's increase interest rate, hawkish, we're going to create more jobs, right? So, so when, 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 when the sentiment is hawkish, gold always falls, right? So, 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 so just watch out for, for, for that. Um, don't always have to take the trade, but you have to be able to analyze and know where the trade is going to happen, okay? So if, if that works out, guys, and, and, and that's clear, I've looked at DXY, I've looked at gold, then I'd like to talk to you guys about AD USD, which currently is bleeding, man. NAD USD, we, we, we took a sell there, uh, and I'm very happy about that particular sell, I won't lie. Um, but more importantly, if you look at my heat map here, 
you'll see this thing is just struggling. It's just struggling, 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 struggling. Right, it's just very much struggling. And, and I think the struggles are linked to a lot of things, but essentially, um, 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 AD, USD, the Australian economy, these guys once upon a time were leading, you know, what a good market recovery should look like. They were crowned, you know, you know, having done extremely well at handling COVID, at, at, at locking down the country early, et cetera. But unfortunately, the waves have caught up with them. And there's, a, a, there's, a, there's, there's currently a big lockdown, as far as I know, it could have come to an end. But as far as I know, the filming of this video, there was a lockdown, a shutdown, right? If there's a shutdown, we're shutting down the economy. We're shutting down the economy, less spending, less spending, more problems, right? So the fundamentals align with a very strong sell setup that already started happening sometime in June, right? So in front of you in the charts there, is AUD USD. I'm just doing that again, just in case you can't see it. There we go. AUD USD. And you can see, man, FOMC is this candlestick and the price has just been falling. And, and, and it's interesting how far low we think we can go. And this is what I have. Right? I'm going to show you this thing. So you should be able to so about. All right, that's not too bad. That's not too bad, right? So let's currently, like, you know, I'm going to adopt another retail trader strategy. I don't mind it. I don't really use it that often. But you can see for yourselves right there, I've got a shoulder, right? Heads and shoulders. I've got a shoulder here, shoulder one. And if that's shoulder one, then I need a second shoulder to complete this thing. This is shoulder two. Right, and if these two areas of value or, or things in control are on my, on my shoulder too, then obviously I've got a head here. Right like that, so that's my head. And, 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 and that's perfect. Now, if I was to draw a neckline on this particular chart, this would be my neckline, right? Where price seemingly always keeps to hover there, right? And fails to break through. That would be my support line. Make my support line as thick as possible. Right. Something like that. So I've got a neckline, I've got a head and shoulder pattern, I've got a break to the downside, which is exactly what we want. Now let's do a measured move. We're going to measure the top of my, um, 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 yeah, whatever it's called, top of my head, right? And then all the way down there uh, uh, to, to the neckline, and I'm going to curl. I'm just trying to clone this thing, guys. Apologies, just bear with me. It'll be much copy. What happened to my clone? Like, imagine, there we go. I apologize, I apologize. Must be, must be lack of sleep. Right, so this is the measure move. This is what I'm looking at here. All right, this is what I'm looking at here. If this was to break out, at least realistically speaking, we would see at least some type of action to the downside here. And if you look left, we've got, okay, we've got this. This is interesting. Right, if you're looking left, this is actually quite interesting, right? That's the, the that's a strong potential that price will first revisit here first, right? So if you really wanted to get out of a sale, this would be a good place to do it. But realistically speaking, man, with, with the COVID, with the expectations of AUD, with the fundamentals right now, I'm pretty sure price will eventually make its way to this double bottom here. And you can want to see the big, 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 big picture. This is what it looks like on the big, big, big picture. Right, markets are really hovering a very unique, strong supply. Had granted that we can no longer say it hasn't triggered, right? It has triggered here a couple of times, one, two, three, and now price is falling, right? Falling with it, right? So, so, so I, I do think this is a chart to look out for, for in the long run, right? A good play. Obviously, what does this mean? Well, like you saw, if we've got positive news and we've got a strong dollar, then this will fall, right? So watch out for that. If you've got a policy, you see what happened here during the FOMC? Massive red candlestick, right? Strong dollar. So we get a strong dollar tomorrow because of positive NFP, then we're gonna be looking for some sell side power, right? And I was really hoping before today, price would push up somewhere here or even there. So I can have a, a much more competitive place you know, to enter, right? But, 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 but as long as Australia is back in lockdowns, the bears are moving in strong, right? It's gonna be a massive, reduced reason for people to, to need commodities, et cetera. And our structure is already at a supply, so we're selling right now. Uh, I, 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 and I hope that head and shoulders thing actually made sense to you. If it didn't, throw it away, don't worry. USD, 
DJPY. Did I sound and look at this with you? Yes, I did. Yes, DJPY. I'm just, just quickly going through these things, guys. We can talk about them properly in the next video. I guess DJPY broke out of a, you know, for me, what was a significant area here, 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 and has arrived at, at you know, the area of value. Um, I mean, it's really up to you what you see. I see a breakout, so I'm not going to be trying to sell this thing. Because if I sell this thing, when I'm seeing a breakout price is going to end up inside, you know, inside a problematic period of my life where, where, where before I knew what I was doing, I was buying when markets were selling and selling when markets were buying. And I want to really thoroughly avoid that. So I can see that there's been a breakout here and markets are up there. Um, we shall see how strong these zones are. If they can push price down, they will. But like I said, you know, if you, if you figure it out, if you look for the 16, this is the 16, the markets chose their winning horse, which was the dollar, this big red candlestick and price just been, you know, they'll pull back, but they'll go back up, right? So if the, the thesis of a strong dollar continues, awesome. But I want to keep this trade in my back pocket because price has arrived at a very valid, authentic supply. And there might be a short-term sell. But right. it might be a strong short term sell if NFP is negative and the dollar has to weaken. This is why I've got this chart here mapped out. But right? I need to make sure as a trader, I have all the scenarios uh, at place there. So USD JPY is looking very interesting, right? Um, 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 we might get a pullback. And here I'm on the daily time frame. Might get a pullback to something like this, to that, right? And on H4, it might look, you know, something similar, et cetera, right? The pullback might even not run that deep. So it might get a pullback that stops someone here and then it pushes back up. Essentially, it's all about people's understanding of this particular data, right? And guys, I think over the years, like I said, it's lost its impact. Uh, uh, but tomorrow is a big deal. So stay tuned. They stay tuned. And I appreciate you. I mean, I really wanted to get this out here, hoping that it helped you. Let me know if it helped you. And just a kind reminder, guys, our remote course is at an all time low, 40% off up until we reach 3000 subscribers. The remote course is hosted like this. You just get access to this thing. It's got all my teachings, all my videos, pre-recorded lectures for only $100 from about 250 to 300. Give or take, I'll check what the team had it on. Every week is labeled correctly. So please watch the videos in order, right? So it makes sense to you. At the end of a, a big teaching block, I've got a PDF there, very short, that actually breaks down what I've explained. So that you've got these teaching notes inside your head, all right? But if you want to take our live classes, also those on a massive discount, the first the first class, our first live class that will run for eight weeks live every night we meet, you know, to, to deal with markets, understanding order blocks, supply and demand, etc. That's going to be on the 13th of July. So look out for that, right? If, 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 if I can just leave you with this, you know, love and light, you guys take care of yourselves. Uh, uh, shake my hand one more time. If you're still watching, let me know you watch till the end. Literally say I watch till the end. I very much appreciate you. All the best tomorrow, traders. Uh, 365. Cheers, guys. Goodbye.